In this instructional video, I will explain to you the basic functionality and the board layout of the Egan Relay Hub. This is the manual that you get with your Egan Relay Hub. And in this manual, you get a brief explanation about the inner workings. You also get a connection example where uh, you mix power supplies and uh, it shows you how to connect switches and loads to it. And you also get a wiring diagram about the internal workings of the relay hub. So just in case you're into electronics, you can figure out yourself exactly how the internals of this product work. You will also find all this information on our website on egan.com.au. In the top left hand side corner, we've got the main power supply for the board. Once power is supplied to this connector, all the fuse holders from one to five and the extra fuse holder in the bottom here to supply the switches have all got power to this side of the fuse holder. Once you put a fuse in here, supply one, you will get power to relay one and you get a constant power output to alt supply number one. With putting in that fuse, you can now put in a switch supply fuse here, which means you get power supply to positive on the very bottom connector here. So that means that you now got positive and negative supply for your switches. So you can run a multi-core cable, ideally a seven core, trailer cable 3 mil from here to a switch bank supply positive and negative so that the control light on your switch works and the return cable can go back to switch inputs number one which is this connector up here and as soon as you get a signal in between 5 and 30 volt into this connector this little unit on the circuit board here will read that there's a high signal and it will switch relay number one on which will then give you power supply to load number one and you can connect a light an oven or whatever you want to switch to this connector and it will turn on at the same time as the output becomes active this led will light up and just in case a fuse blows for supply one this led will light up as soon as you've got something connected to the output. You also find that there's a switch right next to each relay. These are override switches just in case your external switching fails for whatever reason. You've got an override switch on the board to activate the output. This is quite handy for fault finding because as soon as you turn something on here you will see the LED turning on. You know your power supply and your relay are still working and you can work backwards to see if either the switch circuit is faulty or the power supply is faulty. So fault finding measures are being built in to this board. Another thing that is interesting to know about this board is that if you mainly using the power supply to the main connector, but let's say circuit number five, you need to have a different power supply instead of your main power supply because you might be running this off a start battery. You can leave fuse supply five out, run power supply with an external fuse into alt supply number five and now relay number five, load output number five are connected through the external fuse to a different battery. The cool thing is, if you're running these circuits of 12 volt, you can have this circuit running on 24 volt if you want to. It's completely independent from the rest as, soon as, you, uh, as long as you leave this fuse out. In truck installations, it can be really handy because your house battery is usually 12 volt, but your truck battery system is 24. So you can mix different batteries and different battery supplies, supply voltages on the same board. You can do the same thing on the switch inputs. So for switch number five, you can also have a 24 volt input. Obviously that's not coming through this fuse here. It will come through an external fuse as well. But as soon as you get a high signal that is less than 30 volts to switch input number five, 
relay number five will turn on and it will give a power output to load number five which comes into the board from here and has got an external fuse that way you can actually mix power sources and you can also mix switch sources just in case you do want to switch an input from 12 and 24 volt you can do that as well you just have to make sure that if you got a 12 volt cable coming in and a 24 volt cable coming in you put external diodes that will prevent back feed into the system i will show you on the board how that is done to give you an example this is the connection strip for the switches on the relay hub and you got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten connectors in there this is your power outlet positive and this is negative for the switch supply that's got the fuse sitting here on the board so you can run this to a switch and then have the output of the switch going back to the same connection strip and as soon as you give power to this this is for supply one relay number one will turn on the negative is here because most switches have got a control light and that means as soon as you get power onto the output the control light will come on that's why we got positive and negative especially just for the switch supply a 3 amp fuse is enough for this because the relays usually use around 250 milliamps to activate so it's plenty but now you can mix and match power sources let's say this fuse here is running on 12 volt because you put the main power supply as 12 volt on the board you will have 12 volt going back into the board here but you've got a 24 volt system and you've also got an external 24 volt switch that you do want to run into the same input you see if you just run it like this if both switches are on you will blow this fuse because you will be connecting 24 volt through these switches directly to 12 volt on that board to prevent things from happening what you'll do is you can put blocking diodes in here 3 amp blocking diodes are plenty for this application and if you put these in externally in this way what you do is as soon as you got 24 volt power here it will go to the circuit board but it will not be able to run back to the 12 volt system and vice versa the 12 volt cannot go back to the 24 volt system even though that wouldn't be possible anyway because 12 and 24 won't go that way it will only go this way but this is how you can mix different voltage switches and systems to activate relays on the circuit board. This concludes the overview and the explanation of the circuit board itself. In the next video we explain to you how to wire up driving lights with the relay hub.